I cut the master down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome live to Winfield on the campus of Falk University in Montgomery, Alabama for Senior Day. We apologize for the technical difficulties during Senior Day. It seems like our video enco encoder to get down in the weeds was just getting overheated and blasted by the sun today. A very humid and muggy Saturday afternoon here in April in Montgomery is, come, is what you've come to expect. We've got the Faulkner Lady Eagles and the Point Skyhawks on tap today. Two games, the last two home conference softball games for the Lady Eagles before heading to Thomas next week for their regular season finale, the conference tournament indicator in sight. Carter Mills alongside Trinity Thomas bringing you all the action of this contest. We'll go ahead and get you the starting lineups. We'll start with the visitors from point. Leading off is the left fielder, Hannah Phillips. Batting second is the shortstop. Number 12, Ramsey Clark batting Third will be the center fielder, number three, Brooke Burkett. Batting fourth, the first the first baseman, number 11, Tia Coleman. Batting fifth, the catcher, number 18, Sam, Savannah Bryant. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number four, Mary Durham. Batting seventh will be the right fielder, number six, Ainsley Joyner. Batting eighth, the designated player, number 16, Sky Lofton. And batting ninth, the Second baseman, number 14, Mackenzie Diaz. And in the circle for the Skyhawks is Caitlin Giles. Journey, who are the Faulkner Eagles starting today? Yeah, leading off and playing designated player is number one, Chloe Davidson. Batting second is shortstop, senior Anna Purvis. Batting third is catcher, senior number nine, Jordan Boyd. Batting fourth is left in left field, number 16, Ivy Hill. Batting fifth, playing third base, number 17, Erica Mitchell. Batting sixth, playing first base, number 18, Anna Marie Stukesbury. Batting seventh, playing second base, number 26, Brianna Boyd. Batting eighth in right field, number 21, Evie Polk. And batting ninth, center fielder, number 20, Kaylee Harrison. And in the circle for the Lady Eagles is Caitlin Ennis today. And so uh, as you're seeing on your screen right now, we're once again having those same issues as the sun is just absolutely frying our equipment like a piece of bacon. We're under a tent here, but it's still not working. So we'll try and keep the action going for you as, as best as we can uh, just through through audio through those moments as, uh, as hopefully uh, the equipment can figure itself out and, and uh, cool down a little bit. So it is, it will be 22 and 17. Faulkner taking on 7 and 32 point. Just a few minutes. These starting lineups are being introduced here, and we'll be back for first pitch on the other side on the Faulkner Sports Network.
Welcome back, first pitch moments away from here. On the Faulkner Sports Network as the Lady Eagles take the field, Jordan Boyd back behind the plate. And start this one. Hannah Phillips in the left-handed batter's box. A junior from Headland, Alabama. So Caitlin Ennis will throw to Jordan Boyd for the first pitch of senior day. Wind up and the pitch. That one just outside. They're on the horn right now. Brianna Boyd, her twin sister at second. Playing level, if not even maybe slightly ahead of Caitlin Ennis. Anna Marie Stukesbury at first. Left side of the infield. As you've come to expect throughout the season for Faulkner. Erica Mitchell at third. Anna Purvis at short. Left field is Ivy Hill. Center field is Abby Terrell. Right field is Evie Polk. A delivery in there for a strike. So a couple changes before the first pitch, just as a, a courtesy start. Delivery in there for a strike. 2-2 Two -two count. Caitlin Ennis, a six-year senior, trying to work this 2-2 Two -two count. The delivery fouled back. Again, we apologize about the issues. We're doing everything we can uh, to try and get this uh, encoder as cool as possible, but it is still uh, causing the issues uh, <laughs> where it, it is flickering. So I hope that you'll at least stay with us uh, through audio as we try and work out the issues with the video. That one fouled off. We've got a great team who's working on it. Been working hard on it and is extremely frustrated by the situation as it's now freezing up uh, on, on our screen. And that is, uh, again, we're doing everything we can with it. If you're upset, please send donations and we can get better equipment. Wind up and the pitch. Outside, just barely misses the low outside corner of the left-handed batter. Phillips in a battle here early. Batting 295 on the season, on base of 388. The full count to Caitlin Ennis. The delivery swung on and missed. And Ennis records the strikeout. Bring up Ramsey Clark, the shortstop. Another left-handed batter from LaGrange, Georgia. First pitch of the at-bat in there for a strike for Menace. I just recorded her 61st strikeout of the year. 88 innings of work now. Entered at the 290 batting average against and a 303 ERA, a 6-5 and five record. Gone the distance six times. That one popped back and fouled. So evidently putting a Chick-fil-A cup full of ice uh, on top of the thing is somewhat cooling it down. Hopefully it'll pay dividends here. 0-2 count as Ennis rocks and fires. That one just misses a little bit below belt high to the outside. Umpire said it just missed the outer edge of the plate. 1-2 count with one out. Wind up and the pitch. Clark swings, misses. Two strikeouts for Caitlin Ennis. So two down as Burkett comes up to the plate. Burkett from here, from Millbrook, Alabama. About 20, 30 minutes away, depending on how far up into Millbrook. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Burkett 
275 batting average, 327 on base. Now on an 0-2 hole, Caitlin Nenna's got her swing and a miss in there. Make her chase a rise ball. So Ennis toes the rubber again. Gets a signal from Jordan Boyd. Kicks and fires. Swung on and missed. Ennis strikes out the side on her senior day to start the first inning. Faulkner takes the bats and we return for the bottom of the first. Still scoreless here on FSN. So if you're just joining us and you're wondering if it's your TV messing up or if it's our broadcast, it is the broadcast right now. It is theoretically cooling off a little bit, uh, the equipment that got overheated. That one misses outside. First pitch from Caitlin Giles, a senior from Franklin, Georgia, is away. So it's causing some freezes and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and some flashes across the screen. We hope that that will be resolved soon. We've got a, a good crew working on it. Caitlin Giles in the circle. One misses high. Carries a 5.75 ERA through 91 innings of work. A 3.52 batting average against. They struck out 50, walked 37. She's facing Chloe Davidson, batting 4.09 this season. It's been the hot bat on the Faulkner roster, that one high. Slugging 5.18 on base, a 4.60. 20 RBIs. And she's got a 3-0 count. There's Davidson, one ball away from drawing walk number 13 this season. Her 14th free pass being hit by one pitch so far. That one in there for a strike. Had to get it over and did. Giles looks back into the dugout, gets the signs from Jennifer Tyler and her coaching staff. Davidson fouls that one off. Another foul ball brought to you by Jacob Air of Alpha Insurance. Give them a call, 334-425-3393. His office located in Millbrook, Alabama. Great guy, will be able to take care of all your insurance needs for you as Davidson steps back into the batter's box. Giles, a right-handed pitcher. Leans back, rocks, and fires. Davidson fouls that one off. 3-2 pitch once again. We saw this early in the game against Oakwood. A lot of foul balls creating some long at-bats. Faulkner waiting for the pitch that they want. The wind up and the pitch. Misses high, and Davidson draws the leadoff walk. That'll be Anna Purvis coming up, followed by Gracie Pittman. Pittman entering in for the catcher, Jordan Boyd, who caught three strikeouts to start the game. Get a start on senior day, and Pittman will enter in that three spot. 
So Anna Purvis steps up to the plate. Purvis, another one of the seniors recognized before the game. A senior from Morris, Alabama. That ball missed upstairs. Enfield was charging in as Purvis is showing bunt. Transfer from Blue Mountain. An in-conference transfer. Purvis batting 325 this season, slugging 333 on base of 385. The wind up and the pitch. Bun is down, goes towards the third baseman. Giles ends up picking it up, and it gets through for a base hit. Purvis able to bunt it through the defense that was charging in. And a base knock to start the day for Purvis. Puts two on, nobody out. Gracie Pittman up to the plate. Pittman, another one of the seniors from Prattville, Alabama. Pittman batting 327, slugging 408, 355 on base. Giles in some trouble now. Based in the heart of the Faulkner lineup, 345. Pittman puts down a bunt, and it's a good one. Coleman misses the tag, but throws down to first and retires Pittman, but the sacrifice bunt is successful. Keeping score at home, that's a 3-4 sack bunt. Puts two in scoring position for Ivy Hill. Redshirt Jr. from Warrior, Alabama. Hill batting 250 on the season, 316 on base, 11 RBIs, trying to drive in two right now, get the party started for Faulkner. Wind up and the pitch, misses away for ball one. Giles in some trouble early. That one misses upstairs. 2-0 the count. The Falcon dugout is fired up right now. Wind up and the pitch. Hill fouls that one off. Another foul ball brought to you by Jacob Air of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama. As that's a comeback or it hits off the <laughs> the multiplex back behind us. And then also the bleachers. And if you're wondering why there are so many cars here, it is not a uh, uh, it is not uh, it is a pretty big crowd, but not everybody here for the softball game. There's also graduation going on in the gym, which is located right behind us. So parking a little bit of a nightmare if you're trying to make your way here. So be patient, especially if you know Montgomery driving. Two-two count. Giles kicks and fires. That one misses high. Three-two to Ivy Hill. The left fielder here. First base is free, but it would load the bases for Erica Mitchell. Dangerous scenario, no matter the way that Giles wants to address it. Full count, wind up and the pitch. That one misses high and loads the bases for Mitchell. 18 RBIs this season for Erica Mitchell, has two in scoring position. Third on the team in RBIs, only behind Chloe Davidson and Madeline Becker. Giles struggling a little bit early here. Two walks, only out was off of a sacrifice. That one in there for a strike. And there were two, two bunts. But Purvis able to break what would have been her sacrifice bunt through for a base hit. Bases loaded, nobody out, still scoreless. Erica Mitchell can find her way aboard. We'll put Faulkner in the lead. Giles, 18 pitches in, just one out recorded. Wind up and the pitch. Misses away, good stop. 
Now the backstop, Bryant. Nearly got away there. Had to go opposite hand, top shelf to get that one. Giles gets the sign. The wind up and the pitch. In there. Mitchell did not agree with it, nor did the Faulkner crowd here. Makes it 2-2. Two -two. The delivery. Misses high, runs it full again. A lot of long at bats. Walker making Giles work for every pitch right now. Only put two balls in play, both one of the bunt variety. The wind up and the pitch. That one's fouled off. And Pepper needs new shorts. My goodness. That net prevented a That net prevented Anna Marie Stukesbury from being decapitated, us from all having to uh, take a trip to the emergency room, and me from a really nice workers' comp check. Thanks a lot. Full count again. And fouled off. Mitchell holds on to the bat this time. That would be an interesting uh, workplace accident to explain. Yeah. So, so why do you have a massive laceration across your, across your uh, forehead and uh, you're concussed? Oh, a bat flew at you. <laughs> did you do anything to deserve it? Not really. Maybe Erica thought I did, but like Anna Marie Stukesbury having to shake that one off. Watch the 3 2 pitch in. Mitchell hits that square on the screws right to the third baseman, and Durham makes the out. An important catch there. So a good battle for Mitchell results in a line out to the third baseman. Really tough break off of a good battle and a good cut. Great reflection or great reaction from Durham. Stukesbury bases loaded. Watch his strike in there. Stukesbury, a two sport athlete. Member of the Faulkner women's golf team. Transfer from Lee up in Tennessee. And goes upstairs, one and one. And Reese Tewksbury wrapped up her college golf career earlier this week in the SSAC Golf Championships. That one in there for a strike. Able to get the right at the knees. Low part of the zone, a little generous there. One, two count. Giles trying to work out of a, a really sticky situation. A hit and two walks. Nobody across yet. Wind up and the pitch. Misses. Really, really good take from Stukesbury there. A two, two count, two outs. Giles delivers. Stukesbury hits that one over the first baseman. He'll drop down in the right field. One run will score. Two runs are coming in. Hill will be sent after the bobble in right. And three runs in. A two RBI single for Anna Marie Stukesbury to put Faulkner in a 3 nothing lead. A little bit of trouble on right field for Joyner trying to pick up the ball. And some great base running, aggressive base running from Hill. And a great send from Hal Wynn makes it 3 nothing Faulkner. So Brianna Boyd steps up to the plate. Three runs in for Faulkner on the hit. And in there for a strike, and what a difference that at bat makes. If Stukesbury doesn't reach there, she was one strike away from possibly ending inning with nobody on. Now it's a three nothing ball game in the first, and you have point on their heels to start. Brianna Boyd at the play. 
Another senior from Noonan, Georgia. Second baseman for this contest, just a bit outside. Stukesbury takes off to second. He's held on to the ball a little bit too long, did Giles. Now another runner in scoring position, Brianna Boyd. Fouls that one off, makes it one and two. Brianna Boyd making her sixth start, looking for her first hit of the season. Picked up her first stolen base of the year. So one, two count. Giles kicks and fires, strike three called on the outside edge. Great pitch from Giles to get out of the jam, but Stukesbury drives home two, and another comes in off the air as Faulkner takes a 3-0 lead into the second inning on the Faulkner Sports Network. Starting to sprinkle a little bit here at Winfield. That one misses away. Gracie Pittman's checked in behind the plate, as we mentioned earlier. I believe that we have a sub for point as well in the lineup. I believe that's what the 19 for six in right field was. That one swung on and missed. Umpire just came over and told the Faulkner dugout that one. I believe it'll be Kaylee Quarles who will be due up if you reach that spot in the lineup, she'd be due up fourth. As it was the first baseman, Tia Coleman, at the plate. Coleman saw the ball ju go just over her head, and swung on and missed. One, two, the count now as Ennis has been on fire after a strong first inning. Tia Coleman, senior from Mobile. The one, two delivery. Swung on and missed. That's four strikeouts and four batters for Caitlin Ennis. She's cooking right now, folks. The six-year senior wearing number six has been such a great member of this Faulkner program for, for several years now. And is starting her last home game at Winfield in a dominant fashion. That one misses away, just barely missing. The strike zone of the catcher, Savannah Bryant, a junior from Valley, Alabama. Valley right next to West Point, Georgia, where Point University is located. If you're unsure where Point University is located, if you live in the Montgomery area and you ever go buy lottery tickets across I-85, you stopped in West Point to go get them. They are right across the Georgia line, about 80 miles separating the two campuses. Swung on and missed. Makes it one and two.
Ennis kicks, fires, swung on and missed. That's five strikeouts for Caitlin Ennis with five batters. That brings up the third baseman, Mary Durham. First pitch in there for strike one. Ennis gets the sign from Pittman. Rocks and fires. That one knuckled off foul territory. Stukesbury makes the grab. And Faulkner. Defense has been largely optional for the first two innings. Tewksbury makes a great play. It's the only ball that's been put in play by point so far. We head to the bottom of the second. 3-0 Faulkner on FSN. First pitch to Evie Polk, misses for ball one. The delivery in there for a strike. Makes it one and one. Polk, the right fielder. Trying to add a couple more runs in this inning for Faulkner. Trying to be the leadoff batter to start things off. Giles delivers, Polk fouls that one off. Another foul ball brought to you by Jacob Air of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama, and it nearly took out a graduate. That's a way to say congratulations, I guess. <laughs> congratulations, here's a diploma and a goose egg on your leg. Two-two count. Popped up, Coleman chases in, makes the grab. One down. Brings up Abby Terrell, center fielder for today. And a versatile outfielder for Faulkner. Abby Terrell. Go, Abby. Terrell batting 301 this season, 366 slugging, 409 on base. 
That one popped foul. Another foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Millbrook, Alabama. Give them a call, 334-425-3393. Terrell, a sophomore from Bruton, Alabama. Delivery. Terrell flares that one off. A little battle it away. 0-2 count again. Nine-hole hitter will turn over the line up to Chloe Davidson. The wind up and the pitch. Misses. One and two. Charles already over 40 pitches. Rocks, fires, misses high, two and two. Delivery from Giles. Hit well in the left field, but right into the glove of Phillips. Hannah Phillips had it read perfectly, had it shaded perfectly. On a tough luck fly out. She put an absolute charge into that ball. And turn over the lineup to Chloe Davidson to drew a leadoff walk to start the game. Came in as the first run. A go ahead to run. Giles delivers. That one hit well into center field. Chases back the center fielder and making the play is Burkett to end the inning. So a couple well hit balls from Faulkner. Couldn't get him to fall though. We head to the third. Three nothing Faulkner here in FSN. So it's the new right fielder. That one swung on and missed. Number 19, Kaylee Quarles. Quarles, rather. Quarles, a junior from Headland, Alabama. Checked in after the, the error and right getting in. Trying to pick up the ball. Brought in another run. And at 3-0 off of the two RBI single from Anna Marie Stukesbury. Two outs and two strikes in the first. 
That one in there for a strike, two and two the count. Ennis was behind in the count for the first time all day just then. Kaylee Corals, 227 batting average, 301 on base. Pops that one up, foul territory off the net. And this kicks and fires on misses. 3-2 the count, full count for Ennis. Wind up and the pitch. Strike three called at the knees. Six strikeouts through seven batters for Caitlin Ennis, and she is on fire right now. Brings up Sky Lofton, senior from LaGrange. The delivery in there for strike one. Misses high, one and one. <laughs> and what's been working so far, we are now holding a giant box fan. If you want to know what the state of NAIA operations are, Trinity Thomas is currently running stats and holding a box fan on our, on our uh, video encoder in order to cool off the encoder and make sure that this thing keeps working for you. 2-1 count, or sitting underneath a tent. The delivery, that one fouled off. Two-two count. As Madeline Becker continues to heckle her teammate, Gracie Pittman. Sometimes senior days can have a, a tough emotion to get through. Uh, the Lady Eagles really enjoying the last opportunity to play together on this field. Swung on and missed. Oh, my goodness. Seven strikeouts for Ennis. Through eight batters. The Lady Eagles having a lot of fun out there today. Brings up the nine-hole hitter, Mackenzie Diaz, two outs in the bottom of the third. Diaz, freshman from Monticello, Georgia. Shows bunt, popped up. Mitchell makes the grab and retires the side. Nothing doing for the Skyhawks through three. We head to the bottom of the third. Three-nothing Faulkner on FSN.
So Anna Purvis steps up to the plate. Had a great bunt single last time up. In there for a strike one from Giles, her 45th pitch. The right-handed pitcher surrendered two hits, walked two, three earned runs. A little bit of a weird scenario as although Hill came in to score on the on the error with two outs, there's a wild pitch that Sukesbury would have likely scored on. Turn that into an earned run. That one missed two and one. There are a lot of weird idiosyncrasies of baseball and softball scoring. It's more of an art than a science most of the time. Two one. Went in there for a strike. The 2-2 two -two count. It's Purvis Pittman and Hill up. The delivery. Slapped foul. Two two count. Giles gets the sign, rocks and fires. Purvis rips that through the left side for a base hit. Two for two start for the shortstop. Brings up Gracie Pittman now. Had a great sacrifice bunt. Gracie Pittman steps up to the plate now. Purvis takes a lead as Pittman draws the, bunt, the bat back and showed bunt. She gets the sign from Hal Wynn. It was now at 902 career wins. The wind up and the pitch. Bunt down, but foul. One one count to Pittman. Giles delivers. Bun is down. Throw down the line is in time. And Pittman seems a little shaken up right now. Trying to get down the line. Advances Purvis on the sacrifice. Just making her way off the field. So Ivy Hill That one hit up the middle. That will drive in one. Purvis on her horse. Hill almost caught up in no man's land and she is trying to get out of the rundown with an RBI single. 
And so the eight four three eight three put out. We'll go back and verify that one off the video in between innings because those rundowns get really, really chaotic. Yeah, I don't think it's going to let me put that many characters in <laughs> one anyway. So. Yeah, I'll probably just have to go in the next play because presto. So Erica Mitchell at play, chopped foul. Mitchell flew out last time up. And the liner to third. Really good cut, really good at bat. Hopefully the gloves are a little bit stickier this time. 4-0 the score. And Ivy Hill able to drive in Anna Purvis. With a clean slate on board. That one popped up. Foul territory. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama. 334-425-3393, his phone number. O2 count. Giles delivers. Mitchell pops that up, foul territory. And that will nearly knock out my daughter. <laughs> Between throwing a bat over here and now hitting a foul ball in this area, somebody in this area made Erica Mitchell upset. I don't know who it is. O2 count. Mitchell trying to climb the ladder. The delivery. That one misses. Good take from Mitchell. So Mitchell waits the one two offering from Giles. Hits that one well, but foul. Making really good contact, just hadn't been able to find the fair grass yet. Pitch. Mitchell pulls that one foul. Another foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama. 334, 4-2-5, 33-93. Pitch. Mitchell pokes that in the left field and it'll drop down. Had to reach out to go get that one, but able to drop that in the left field for a base hit. So Anna Marie Stukesbury had two RBI single last time up. Able to pull it down the first baseline. And in there for a strike. <laughs> oh, one count to Stukesbury. Having a great day so far. And a nice put out in foul territory. Now knuckles that in the left field. That'll drop for a base hit. Back to back hits. Really. Three straight hits for Faulkner after Ivy Hill's single. Brings up Brianna Boyd. Brianna Boyd. Good job, sister. So Stukesbury two for two. A pair of singles. 
hitting to both sides of the field. The delivery misses high, good eye by Boyd. Boyd seeking her first hit of the season. That one fouled. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Who's seven hole hitter and second baseman, Brianna Boyd, seeking her first hit of the year. She can. She's got an RBI opportunity. Erica Mitchell on second. Delivery. Misses high. Two-one count, two outs. Giles, rocks and fires. Boyd fouls that one off. Two-two. So Giles steps back in the circle. Wind up and the delivery, swung on and missed. Giles gets out of it, but Faulkner gets one in the bottom of the third. And it's 4 nothing Eagles after three on the Faulkner Sports Network. Back at the top of the fourth. Top of the lineup for the Skyhawks here. And in there for a strike. Sarah Williams behind the plate now. After Pittman had pulled up a, a little lame going down the first baseline. Certainly hope she's okay and it's more precautionary. Shows bunt. Pokes it foul. Phillips, one of the seven strikeout victims, first time through the lineup for Caitlin Dennis. The corner infielders with the other outs. Dennis requesting a new softball. Ennis delivers. That one misses. Two-two count. Ennis delivers. 
That one popped up foul territory. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama. So 2-2 two -two count again. The delivery. That one fouled off. Another foul ball. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That one hit into left field, and that will drop. And the first base runner of the day for the Skyhawks. Good battle by Phillips there. Ruins the potential no-hit bid going through the lineup the first time. The potential no a perfect game as well. That one misses high. Williams stabs at it. Throw goes a little high. Good backup by Terrell. Limited just the stolen base. Yeah, Ennis kept it pretty clean through the first three. And doing a really good job. Went in there for a strike. One one count delivery in there for a strike. Sarah Williamson, third catcher utilized in this game by Faulkner. Freshman from Marbury, played high school ball at Prattville Christian Academy. Mm. Misses or swung on and missed upstairs. Strikeout number eight for Caitlin Ennis. That one fouled off. Brooke Burkett. Waits the Owen offering after fouling that one off. Fouled again on the bunt. O2 count. Wind up and the pitch. Strike three called. And Caitlin Ennis, strikeout number nine. Absolutely on fire through this lineup right now. Nine strikeouts. Tia Coleman, one of those strikeout victims at the plate now. The delivery, that one in there for a strike. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike, runner goes, couldn't get her. And Phillips now on third, trying to turn that leadoff single into something. Couple stolen bases got, has her 60 feet away. But 0-2 count, Ennis. Got Coleman right on the elbow.
That will bring up Savannah Bryant, the junior from Valley, Alabama. Coleman able to carry on. Popped off her elbow. They just seemed to think she'd leaned into it a little bit. Delivery. First pitch hit right to short, and Purvis makes the grab. So two get on, nobody comes home. Caitlin Dennis, nine strikeouts through four as we head to the bottom of the fourth on the Faulkner Sports Network. So Evie Polk steps up to the plate. That one in there for a strike. Regular seasons for baseball and softball starting to wind down here. Chopper goes to short. Would have been a tough play. And kind of ate up and Clark there. Abby Terrell comes up. We're going to look at that play again, determine hit or error. Abby Terrell 0 for 1, had a really good cut in the left field. Puts down a bunt. Throw over from third is in time, but the sacrifice is successful. So a successful 5-4 sack bunt. Turns over the lineup to Chloe Davidson with the runner on second. Evie Polk standing on second. Davidson over one with a walk. One fouled off. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Air of Alpha Insurance, Millbrook, Alabama. Giles' delivery misses. One and one.
Davidson hits that into left field. Laying out, can't get it. Davidson rounds in for second, and Polk comes in to score. So an RBI double for Chloe Davidson. It's a great effort from Phillips. Nearly made the play, but an RBI double. And Polk with the pop-up slide to score the run. Makes it 5-0. Anna Purvis at the plate. And so Purvis fouls that one off. It'll be an unearned run as Polk reaches on an error on that. That one misses. Delivery misses. Makes it two and one. Faulkner baseball with a chance to win the number one overall seed and get at least a share of the conference championship with a win or with two wins or a win and a Loyola loss. That one popped up center field. Should be a can of corn and is. The Purvis, a two for two start, now two for three. Still not a still not a bad day. Sarah Williams at the plate. Five nothing ball game. That one hit well in the left center field. It'll drop down. Davidson will round and she will score. So an RBI single makes it 6 0. Ivy Hill steps up to the plate after Sarah Williams just needed one pitch to make an end in on this game. And looks like that will be the last pitch that Giles will throw in this one. Looks like a new pitcher will come in. Looks like Emma Cavender. And we'll tell you a little bit more about her on the other side. Faulkner leads 6 nothing. Just one out or two outs in the fourth on the Falker Sports Network. Two outs, Ivy Hill fouls the first pitch off as Sarah Williams over on first. It's a 6 nothing ball game. And Emma Cavender inherits the freshman from Woodley, Alabama. Cavender, a 4-2-0 ERA, has worked eight in the third innings, a 4-0-5 batting average against. Two strikeouts, one walk. That one misses. 
Giving up 17 hits in that time. Faulkner's got an opportunity to base off the numbers. A pitcher that pitches in a little bit more contact. And the very small sample size. That one hit right to second, up and firing. And retiring aside, so Cavender does the job. And we head to the fifth, 6 nothing Faulkner on the Faulkner Sports Network. Caitlin Ennis back in the circle, nine strikeouts, 56 pitches now. Just one hit against her. Mary Durham at the plate, the third baseman. Trying to start some damage. That one hit well into right field. Polk fields it perfectly. Evie Polk with great defense there to chase back, get that first out. Keep your eye on the ball and keep moving towards it. One down. For Kaylee Quarles. The Quarles pops that up. Foul territory. Williams lays out. Crashes into the wall. Pops right back up. Ennis delivers, Corals is hit and will walk down the line. So two hit by batsmen, or hit by pitch batters, and that is the only, uh, those are two of the three runners that have been put on today. So Lofton. At the plate, this guy Lofton, the senior, sees the first pitch ball. Six nothing ball game. Ennis delivers, and in there for a strike. Ennis delivers, swung on and missed. One, two, the count. Swung on and missed, 10 strikeouts for Caitlin Ennis. A new season high. 
Had nine against Bernal. And this has been easily her most dominant performance of the season, too. One misses. She had 12 last season against Central Methodist. 11 against Talladega in 2022. That one hit up the middle. Purvis fields and fires and gets the out. And that will retire the side. Ten strikeouts for Caitlin Ennis through five. Faulkner has a chance to end it and run roll if they can score two here in the bottom of the fifth when we return on the Faulkner Sports Network. So Erica Mitchell steps up to the plate now. Had a couple good at bats. One for two currently. First pitch, misses away. That one hit well in the left field, but just foul. Missed it by about two feet. Great swing. Over in Cochran, Faulkner baseball off to a one nothing lead in the second inning. Playing seven and nine over there. A seven inning game here is Emma Cavender. Delivers. Mitchell pops that one up. Foul territory. Racing over, making the play is Mary Durham for the first out. So Anna Marie Stukesberry. Two for two, two RBIs, a pair of singles. Cavender delivers, that one in there for a strike. Pitch, misses high, two and one. K 
Cavender delivers. Swung on and missed. Nasty changeup. That one misses away. Full count to Stukesbury. Faulkner up six, bottom of the fifth. That one hit well, but foul. Sukesbury who hit a walk-off home run against William Carey last season, one of her big career highlights. The delivery. Misses, and Sukesbury draws a walk. She's been aboard all three times so far. Brings up Brianna Boyd. 0 for 2 with a couple strikeouts. Brianna Boyd. Cavender delivers. First pitch in there for a strike. Swung on and missed. Now an 0-2 hole for Boyd. That one misses. That one hit well in the left field, but foul. One-two count. Cavender looks down at the wristband, gets her signal, and delivers. Misses high. Two and two now. The pitch is hit off the end of the bat, throwed first in time from Cavender. She advances Anna Marie Stukesbury over. Brings up Evie Polk. So Cavender's come in and done a great job. We get her first full inning of work. And then stop the bleeding so far. Evie Polo trying to rip open the, the wound. The delivery in the dirt. Good block. The pitch swung on and missed.
the one-two pitch. Polk fouls that one. Polk 0 for 2 today, trying to find their way aboard. That one will get through the right side, and Stukesbury will around, and she will score. So an RBI single from Evie Polk. He's up Abby Terrell, who's been hitting the ball well. Cavender delivers. Polk takes off. The throw is not in time. Great slide from Polk. The throw is pretty good. Polk able to slide to the back edge of the bag and force a tougher tag that couldn't get down. Mackenzie Diaz has switched over to the shortstop and has swapped with Ramsey Clark. The pitch. That one misses for ball one. That one hit well into center field, left center, and it is off the wall. Terrell will be in with the standing double. And that makes it 8 nothing, and that will walk it off. So Faulkner, 8-0 win here behind some great hitting and a dominant pitching performance from Caitlin Ennis. Ten strikeouts in five innings. Only allowed one hit and three base runners the entire time. Faulkner walks it off here in the fifth. 8-0 win over the Point Skyhawks. We'll play another one in about 30 minutes. Hope you'll stay with us here on the Faulkner Sports Network.
to Winfield here for game two. Here in the bottom of the... Point stranded a runner on third, but Thames was able to get the Lady Eagles out of a jam. So still scoreless to the bottom of the first. 3-1 count for leadoff batter Chloe Davidson. Playing DP in game two as well. That one hit the short. Davidson beats out the throw from Diaz. So it's an infield hit. For Chloe Davidson beat out the throw. In the circle for the Skyhawks is Alyssa Burrows. Burrows comes into the game with a 4 and 14 record. Appeared 22 times, pitched 108 and one third innings. 67 strikeouts, faced 468 batters with a 3-4-6 batting average against. And that one will hit Purvis. Oh, looks okay, up and standing. Moves to first, and that will advance Davidson to second. And bring up first baseman for game two, batting in the three-hole spot, Madeline Becker. didn't see action in game one. That one fouled off, ripped to the left. So 0 one count now. Lady Eagles won game one senior day, eight to zero. Walked it off with an RBI double from Abby Terrell in the end. That one misses, high. So one, one. Sorry for the technical difficulties earlier in game one. Trying to get all that sorted out with the equipment and everything going on. That one drops bunt. Durham to Coleman in time, so the 5-3 sack BU will advance both runners. Second and third respectively. That'll bring up Ivy Hill in the cleanup spot today in game two. Still remaining in left field. That one called strike. Ivy Hill one for two last game with a walk and an RBI. Game one. That one misses away. So one one count, one away. The bottom of the first here for game two. Senior day for the Faulkner Lady Eagles softball team. Last home conference doubleheader. That one bunted foul. Burroughs gets the sign. Delivery. That one a bit high. It's a 2 2 count. One misses, so Burroughs issues a walk to not quite, so I believe it's actually full. So not quite a walk. I think there was some confusion there. I thought that that was the case, but she went down looking to get on to first. So, so Burroughs, it's the sign. Payoff pitch coming. Now that one was low, and so she does still issue the walk to Ivy Hill. So that'll load the bases and bring up Erica Mitchell. The 
senior from Florence, Alabama. So Burroughs, it's a sign, delivers. That one fouled back. Base is loaded, one away. Bottom of the first right now. Really good situation for Mitchell. Faulkner looking ahead, looking early to get, get ahead early. It's the sign, delivers. That one misses. That one chopped foul to the left side by the home dugout. Yeah, humid day today in Montgomery. High 70s, partial cloud cover right now, but very, very humid. That one misses. Now 80 degrees with 67% humidity. So 2-2 two, two count. That one low. Runs it full. So payoff pitch coming from Burroughs. That one, delivered, shot foul. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Yeah, saw a foul ball earlier when the audio wasn't working. Almost hit our camera. A little bit terrifying, so thankfully we have somebody manning the camera and he blocked it with his hand. A shout out to Gunnar Fleming. That one, foul tip straight back. So seven total pitches at this at bat. Eighth pitch incoming. That one. Burroughs. It's a sign, delivers. That one shot foul again. Yeah, over the past couple days, we've seen a lot of quality at bats. A lot of patience, a lot of, quite a few more double digit at bats as far as pitch count goes than you'd normally see. So Burroughs gets the sign, delivers. That one hit up high, foul territory. Durham makes the grab. So the PF5 will retire Mitchell. Hill, Purvis, and Davidson all remain on first, second, and third. It's two away, bases loaded. Sarah Williams now due up for the Lady Eagles. That one misses. Williams one for one with an RBI last game. So looking to continue to do things the same. So 1-0 count. Burroughs delivers that one high. So 2-0 now. That one misses outside.
That one catches his own first strike. So 3-1 count now. So Burroughs with the delivery, that one high. That'll be an RBI for Williams on the bases loaded walk issued from Burroughs. So Lady Eagles will be the first on the board now. So your score is 1-0 with two away, and bases are still loaded. That one delivered, catches his own. Abby Terrell up to bat. Last time up, she ended game one with a walk-off RBI double. That one catches his own. So 0-2 count now for Terrell. Sign the delivery. That one hit up, but Phillips camps right underneath that line drive. That'll be an F7 to retire the side and get Skyhawks out of a jam with one run, one hit, no errors, and three stranded to end the bottom of the first. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Falcon Sports Network. Top of the second starts with Bryant. Number 18, Savannah Bryant. A junior from Valley, Alabama. That one misses, so. Three zero count for Bryant. That one catches his own. Bryant catching game two. The Ames gets a sign, delivers. That one popped up high. Purvis camps underneath, makes the grab. The pop up to short will retire Bryant. Put one away. Bringing up Mary Durham, the junior third baseman from Salem, Alabama. Thames gets the sign, delivers. That one chopped foul right side.
That one misses. That one delivered. Catches the zone. So one two now. So one two count. The umpire confirms. That one hit up high. Hill makes the play. The F7 will put another one away. Bring up. Ainsley Joyner. Or Ainsley Joyner. Freshman from Sonoya, Sonoya Georgia. That one catches his own. Oh one. That one low. So one one. That one. Catches so one two count now. That one fouled back. That one. Hit up in the left. Hill camping underneath makes the play and retires the side. The F7 will retire the side for second. So three up, three down. That will conclude the top of the second. Be back in a few for the bottom. Now up to bat for Faulkner. Right field today, number 22, Ashton Panel. That one hit up high to left. Phillips camps underneath, makes the grab. That will tire Panel. The F7 and bring up Brianna Boyd. Playing second base today. In both games. That one. It's a zone 01. That one. Swung on. So 02 now. Come on, 
That one catches the edge, so Burroughs strikes her out looking. That'll bring us to the top of the order. Chloe Davidson, DP for both game one and two. That one in the zone for a strike. That one drops to left field, saying it went foul. 0-2, count for Davidson. I believe it made contact with the glove in foul territory. It wasn't caught. That one misses. Burroughs delivers, and that one misses. So 2-2 two -two now. That one fouled off. It's a 2 2, one away. Davidson. Where else delivers? And that one's just a bit low. So it runs it full. Payoff pitch coming. That one chopped down the middle. So that's a single up the middle, Davidson. That one catches the zone. That one misses. So one one. That one high. That one. Hit to the left side. So Purvis hits it. The base knock to the left side. Davidson advances to second. Madeline Becker. At the dish. That one called strike. So oh one count now. Get 
That one. Ripped past short. Yeah, I went single on that one. I don't think that there was going to be a play there. At least for now, I'll confirm later. But as of right now, just straight out RBI single. Regardless, your score is still 2-0. So runners on first and second right now. That one. Cut on. So 1-1 one, one count. That one low. So 2-1 one count now. Burrows, it's a sign, delivers. Hill hits that one up, drops into center field. Well, Hill gets first, Becker advances, and Purvis will head on home. The runners on first and second. Once again, still two away. Apologize for the issues with the video feed. I'll be back in one moment to help troubleshoot that. So we're seeing Cavander back in the circle. Quick little pitching change after Burroughs issued Mitchell a walk. Should have the video feed working as best as it can right now. It's been a little bit of a hectic day. Some issues with temperature and setup and everything like that. Got moved around. I apologize for that. So Cavander. Came in for relief for Giles in game one.
That one catches his own for a strike. So Sarah Williams now at the dish for the Lady Eagles. Fander through one inning of work. That one ripped down left field line, foul. Uh, two hits, two runs, both of them earned, issued one walk. Faced six batters in game one. So 0 2 count for. Commander. That one ripped foul. It's low 80s over here. Like every single piece of equipment that we have is overheating. Apologize for all of the issues. Misses. Throw back over to third. So still bases loaded, two away right now. 2-2 two -two count. That one hit up high. Drops into left. Phillips will camp underneath, make the grab, and retire the side. Lady Eagles will score two runs off four hits, no errors, and strand three to end the bottom of the second. We'll be back with the top of the third in just a few. Score is 3-0, top of the third right now. Lady Eagles on defense. 1-0 count to Partridge. That one popped up. Becker camps underneath. Stumbled a little bit, but still makes the grab. It's a P3. Tire Partridge, bring up Kenzie Diaz. Thames, sign delivers. Diaz cuts on it, can't get it. So one. Yeah. 
That one misses. That one catches the zone. That one fouled straight back. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That one misses low. It's a 2 2 now. Win over there. Home plate umpire discussing something. It's like third base umpire and first base are coming over to speak about something. I'm really not sure what's going on. So I'm really not sure what happened there, but apparently we're all good, so. That one fouled back. So two, two, one away. Ames delivers that one fouled back. You're still currently working on the video feed right now. That one misses high. So runs it full. Thames. Ninth pitch incoming. So also be the payoff pitch. That one fouled back. That one delivered. That one chopped. Becker handles it and steps on the bag. The three U will put Diaz away. Bring up Phillips. Junior from Headland, Alabama. That one catches the zone. So one. That one. It right up the middle. So single up the middle. Get Phillips on board. Bring up Ramsey Clark. Second baseman. Phillips will steal and then advance on the E2T. Phillips at third. That one. Delivered low. It's a 2 0 count now for Clark. Go, 
That one low. To 3 0 now. Two away. Runner on third. That one low. Thames will issue walk to Clark. So runners on the corners now. Bur Burkett. Up to bat, the three hole hitter for the Skyhawks. Still two away here. That one catches the zone. Thames, sign, delivers. That one low. Williams throws over to Purvis. Clark manages to steal successfully. So runners on second and third right now. 1-1 one, one count. That one misses. So 1-2-1. One, one. That one hit. Back up, Purvis handles Becker. So the 6-3 will retire the side and the Lady Eagles out at the top of the third unscathed. This is Lady Eagles softball on the Falcon Sports Network. Here back in the that one missed. Terrell slaps that one foul left side. 0-2 for Terrell. Apologize for the live stats being down also. That's a server-wide issue. A lot of traffic on Saturdays for sidearm live stats. So it's through our website. If you're able to see them, it's great, but been having some issues here with that too. So one, two, count now. Cavender. That one hits straight up through the left side. That'll be a single for Abby Terrell.
That one chopped foul. So two now. Sorry for the brief intermission. That's what I'll call it. Having any sort of technical difficulty that you could probably imagine. But still trying to troubleshoot it as we go. And do our best to provide a live stream with commentary and live stats as well. That one's low. Cavender. So one, two, count. Boyd. That one chopped straight to Cavender. One, three will retire Boyd and Boyd in advance Terrell. Bring up the leadoff batter, Chloe Davidson. Back at the top of the order for Faulkner now. That one misses. That one chopped. Clark gets it to Coleman in time. So the 4-3 will retire the side. Bring us to the top of the fourth when we get back shortly. Top of the fourth. Ames delivers. That one hit right back up. So Coleman starts off with a first pitch base knock. That'll bring up Savannah Bryant for the Skyhawks. That one straight down the middle. Oh, one count now. That one hit back up. Oh, the fielder's choice in the E4. We'll put Coleman on and get Bryant to first.
So the successful execution of the double play right there, the 4-6-3. The Boyd to Purvis to Becker. That one. Delivered low. So it's two away. Coleman remains on third. 1-1 one, one count. That one fouled back. So 1-2 now hits the side of that multiplex building over there. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That one a bit high. It's a 2-2 two -two count. Top of the fourth right now, two away, 2-2 two -two count with runner on third. Mitchell, chopped to Mitchell, Mitchell over to Becker. So 5-3 will retire the side. So the end of the top of the fourth, no runs, one hit, one error, and one stranded. Be back with the bottom of the fourth in just a moment. So Faulkner back on offense here. The three-hole hitter do up and a Purvis. A vendor. It's a sign. Delivers that one. Bit high. That one catches. So one one count now. That one, sign, deliver, cuts on that one. So one, two now, Purvis. KS 2 3 will retire Purvis. Bring up Madeline Becker. So one away, bottom of the fourth. That one. Delivered, foul tipped by Becker. So 23 pitches from Cavender right now, 16 of them strike. That 
That one low. One one. Delivery. Just a bit high. So two one now. That one, hit up high. Clark, okay, there's a collision over there. But I believe Clark still made the play. So it's a P4, but Clark and Joyner look to both be going for the same ball. Thankful that they're back up and standing. So another one away now. Brings up Ivy Hill to the dish. Bender delivers. That one's low. So 1 0 count now. That one. Foul tip back. That one popped up the shoot. Foul ball. Hit back into the bleachers. No foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. It's always a little bit scary when that happens. You never know where it's going to go, whether it be a bat or a ball. Just kind of hope you don't get injured. That one's low. Also thankful for a tent. Wouldn't want to get smacked on the top of the head by a softball that was hit foul. Vander, that one. Hit up the shoot into the away dugout. Hits the roof. Ball's out of play. So still 2-2. Hill. That one drops into center field. It's a base hit. It's a two away with the runner on first after a single from Ivy Hill. Bringing up Erica Mitchell. Gets a sign, delivers. That one's high. So one oh. That one misses. Throw back to first. 
Hill still safe. That one, big cut on it. He'll swipe second. It's a two two count. Two one, excuse me. Vendor, it's a sign, delivers, that one's low. Rolls in the dirt. Three one. Bender delivery. That one hit up straight to Phillips. The F seven will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one strand at the end of the bottom of the fourth. And we'll be back with the top of the fifth here in a few moments. That one hit right past second base. A base hit to open up the top of the fifth. That'll bring up Diaz. Kenzie Diaz. That one, bunt dropped. Becker applies the tag and Partridge advances. So the three U sack BU will advance Partridge, put one away, bring up Hannah Phillips for the Skyhawks. That one high. Two O count now. Thames gets a sign, delivers that one. Misses away. So three O count. That one catches his own for a strike. That one, cut on that one, can't get it, runs it full.
That one drops to left field. Partridge gets the third and Phillips on first. The runners on the corners, one away. Top of the fifth. A pinch runner over at third. Number nine in for 15. Chloe Mitchum over at third right now. Ramsey Clark at the dish. The left-handed batter's box. That one fouled back. Delivers that one. Misses and Williams throws it a bit high, but it's like Boyd was able to make the catch and prevent that from going where it didn't need to be. So Faulkner remains unscathed, avoiding the errant throw. It's a 2 1 count. That one misses. That bunt popped. Mitchell overthrows Boyd. Well, that will bring home Mitchum, Mitchum and Phillips. So. That drives in two runs for the Skyhawks. E5T. On the sacrifice bunt attempt. E5T. That one drops into center. That will drive Clark home. And tie up the game. Looks like meeting at the mound.
Well, here for a pitching change, Haley O'Brien will come in to relieve Juliana Thames. So, all tied up here in the top of the fifth. Tie ball game here. Either pitcher gets the decision now, whatever the result may be. Brian pitched in relief yesterday and came out with the save. Brian, that one misses. So 1 0 count for O'Brien. That one fouled off right. I've been a lot of interesting scoring plays this weekend, including. Friday as well. Been a challenge sometimes, especially when you're multitasking. <laughs> that one's hit up high. Becker camps underneath, makes the grab, so Burkett will remain at first, and the P3 will put another one away. That'll bring up Savannah Bryant, the dish. As I was saying, it was it's. It's kind of fun sometimes you can, you know, figure out all the different scoring rules and just what applies and what doesn't apply. Hit straight back up to O'Brien. O'Brien gets it over to Becker. So the 1-3 off the first pitch will retire the side in the top of the fifth with three runs, three hits, one error, and one stranded. So we're tied three all up here in the top of the, going into the bottom of the fifth on the Falcon Sports Network. Faulkner back on offense at the bottom of the fifth. At the dish leading off is Sarah Williams. Be followed by, at the very least, Abby Terrell and Ashton Panel. Seventh and eighth hole spots. Cavender. It's a sign, delivers that one. 
Catches his own for a strike. That one just a bit high. It's a 1-1 one -one now. That one delivered. That one hit up, drops into center. Williams reaches first on the base knock to center. Bring up Abby Terrell. We'll have Anna Catherine Segrist pinch running over at first. That one called strike. Segrist swipes second. A one count for Terrell. Runner on second. Tied three all right now, no outs. Vendor, it's a sign. Delivers. That one misses. That one. Bunt dropped. Durham. Gets it over to Clark, but it's not going to be in time, so it's going to be a base hit for Terrell, advancing Segrist to third. So runners on the corners now for the Lady Eagles. Ashton Panel at the dish. So a quick meeting. Now we'll resume play as normal. Vendor. So a pitching change now. All right. Burroughs is re-entering. So Burroughs re-entering. Burroughs started the game. Back in the second inning, two outs. Base is loaded situation. Burroughs was pulled for Cavender. A stolen base from Terrell. Segrist remains on third. 1-0 count for panel right now.
Burroughs with the delivery. Bunt dropped. Durham attempts to go over to Bryant, but the throw is not in time, so the fielder's choice. Will advance. Terrell to third and scores Segrist. And the E1 will allow Panel to score. Fielders coming in close. Two oak count. Boyd still on second. Bunt drop, Davidson. So Durham to Coleman in time. So the five, no, excuse me, Durham to Clark in time. So the five four sack bunt. We'll advance Boyd to third. Put one away for Skyhawks. First pitch called strike. Pardon me for some of the pauses. I'm just trying to get a grasp of what's going on and make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. <laughs> on a dead ball. So I'm assuming that goes as a foul. That's that's what I'm going with until told otherwise. The count is 0-2 regardless. O two, one away. That one does hit her. So no confusion there. Burvis will make her way to first. So runners on the corners, one away. In the bottom of the fifth right now, score is six to three. Faulkner advantage. Bring up Madeline Becker, but it looks like there might be a substitute of some sort. So There's pinch runner over at first now, Evie Polk in for Anna Purvis. Madeline Becker at the dish. Don't know if there will be any additional changes. It's just the one.
At one. So 2-6 CS. Fish called strike. Bulk will. That one drops toward the wall in deep left field. So that's a stand up double for Becker. Becker on second, two away. Ivy Hill at the dish. That one misses away. That one misses. So one, two now. Catches the zone, I mean. Correction. That one popped up high. Left field. Phillips camping underneath. So the F7 will retire the side and bring it to the Top of the sixth in just a few moments after the end of the bottom of the fifth with four runs, three hits, one error, and one stranded. First pitch from O'Brien called strike. Durham. Mary Durham up to bat for the Skyhawks. That one low. That one popped up high. Becker camps underneath. P3 will put one away and bring up Ansley Joyner. That one catches his own for strike.
That one. Fouled straight back. So 0 2 now. That one misses low. That one hit up high. Panel camping underneath. Makes the grab just right outside of fair territory. The F9. Put another one away, so bring up Chloe Mitchum. She looks like we have a different batter right now. Number 15, Partridge. First pitch catches the zone. It's like Partridge came in. That one popped up high into the parking lot. Got a rear entry after the sub. That's my bad. That one misses. I don't know where, but it missed. That one popped up high. Williams camping underneath. So the PF2 will retire the side, bring us to the end of the top of the sixth. We'll be shortly with the bottom of the six. So another pitching change here for the Skyhawks. Number five, Zeta Smith, a senior from Grantville, Georgia. Transfer from Bruton Parker College. Now in the circle for the Skyhawks. Smith. Appeared 10 times, pitched 16 innings, 10 strikeouts so far. So not a small sample size. Looks like it's in relief. No decisions yet. So it's a 1-1 count now after that one misses. That one, bit high. That one hit up high. 
Clark camping underneath. That one catches the zone. That one hit right back up to Diaz, and it'll overthrow first base. The E6T advanced Sarah Williams to second. Abby Terrell now at the dish. That one fouled right side over the away dugout. One, one. That one. Missed. That one. Head up into right field. Joiner camps underneath. F9 and Sarah Williams will remain at second. That'll bring up Ashton Panel. Smith. That one misses. That one misses away. That one popped up high. It's going to be past the net over towards the building. So foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear Valve Insurance. So two one count now, two away. Bottom of the sixth. <laughs> that one misses, so Smith will issue a walk. Panel will reach first, and that'll bring up Brianna Boyd. So not an opportunity for a sacrifice play right now. I know that's been the play of choice, but obviously there's two outs, so that's just not going to work. That one misses. That one misses. So 2 0 now. <laughs> that 
That one's cut on. It's a two one now. That one's hit straight up the middle. So Sarah Williams will come home. Panel will advance to third, and that will get Boyd on first. So an RBI single up the middle for Brianna Boyd. First hit of the season, I believe. Now, back at the top of the order with the leadoff hitter, Chloe Davidson. That one. That one misses. Throw back to third, but it's like a little bit of, of a tussle over at third base. So 3-1 now. That one hit straight up, ripped past short. That'll bring panel home. Vance Boyd to third. An RBI single for Chloe Davidson. Your score is now nine to three. Lady Eagles need two more to walk it off at this point. You got runners on corners, two away. Anna Purvis at the dish, that one's low. That one foul tipped back. That one hit right back up, drops into left field. Tough play to make there. A double for Purvis, which will score Boyd. Now runners on second and third. Coach Hal Wynn is looking to make some sort of lineup change. Looks like senior Anna Marie Stooksbury will be hitting in the place of Madeline Becker. That one <laughs> ripped foul to the left, made good contact. Now 
That one catches his own. So 0 2 now. That one misses. That one ripped foul. Same spot as the first time. That one's a bit low. That one chopped. Durham to Coleman. So the 5 3 will retire the side. Point will. Have at least one more chance at offense. So we head to the top of the seventh. Fox Force Network. Kenzie Diaz hits that one, drops into right center. So first pitch, base knock. That'll bring up Hannah Phillips. Brian gets the sign, delivers. That one, a bit outside. Now one catches his own. So one one now. That one misses. That one in the zone for a strike. So 2-2 two -two now for Phillips.
That one chopped. Mitchell makes the play. So the 5-4 fielder's choice will retire Diaz. Great catch from Mitchell. Ground ball took a hop, fielded it cleanly and got it over. So Phillips over at first. So Williams won't be able to make that. So stolen base for Phillips, no other damage done. 1-0 count for Clark. That one oh. fouled to the left side. <laughs> so one, one. Oh, Swings on that one, can't get any of it. That one, they're right up. Mitchell gets it, so limits the damage, but she couldn't quite get up to get it, but she had no business getting to that ball. A great defensive effort. So Phillips will remain second and not advance, and Clark will reach first on the infield hit. Bringing up Brooke Burkett. That one fouled in the parking lot. Brought to you by Jacob Air Valve Insurance. Brian gets the delivery. That one. High fly ball. Panel makes the grab. Gets it over to Mitchell, but no play over at third. So Clark will remain at first. Phillips will advance. Burkett is retired from the F9. Brings up Tia Coleman. Clean up batter for game two. That one's a bit low. Two away, runners on the corners right now. Score is 10 to three. So now it's 1 1 for Coleman. That one driven into right center. The very least a double, a double to right center. Score two. Clark and Phillips. Clark and Phillips will Come on home to cut the Faulkner advantage to five, and that one catches in the zone for a strike. So 0-1 count for Bryant. Still two away. Runner on second. That one misses low. That one 
Fly ball fouled to right field. So it's 1-2 now. That one popped up high. Hill camping underneath makes the play, and that will be the end of game two. So Faulkner sweeps senior day. Game two with a score of 10 to 5. 10 to 5, and so that will be your final score for game two. So once again, Faulkner sweeps the day. Two good games. Senior day honored all eight of those seniors. I'm sorry that we had technical difficulties in the ceremony before. Be pictures posted online. So here for everyone here today, thank you for tuning in. God bless and go Eagles.